What number is 25% of 36? 14 is what percent of 70? And 7 is 35% of what number? Okay, let's talk about the setup here. And I want you to remember how we talk about everything in class is about changing words into math, numbers, and symbols. So we need to be able to take these words and change them into symbols that we understand and then cross multiply and solve these problems. Now, first of all, the word what for us means X. So let's find the what's in all of these questions. There's one, there's one, and there's one. Every one of these questions has a what or an unknown, and that's our X. Okay, when we rewrite this as a proportion, we'll use X in place of the what. Now here's the setup. As you know, a proportion is a comparison of two things, two ratios, both of which are written as fractions. And the way we learned in class is I wanted you to think in a sentence that goes in a circle. So I'm drawing these arrows here. And we're going to have what's in three out of the four places and a 100 here. And here's how this sentence reads. What is what per cent of what? It goes in a circle. Now remember from above, the what's are going to be x's, and depending on how the question is asked, there's three different ways to ask a question like this. Depending on how the question is asked, the x will go in one of those three places. But the is is always the equal sign. Notice up here there's an is. That's the equal sign. There's another one. There's another one. And there will never be more than one in one of these questions, because there can only be one equal sign in an equation. So we've got an x and an equal sign in each one of these problems up above. Now let's go through step by step and set up each one of these three and show you how to solve them. All right? Number one. What number is 25 per cent of 36? By saying the sentence in a circle like that, we see that what is how the sentence begins. There's the per and the cent. Remember, cent stands for 100. And the per is part of the ratio. That's the fraction bar. So we've got this set up correctly now. We go ahead and solve it by cross multiplying. And you can solve these any way you want. But if you don't have it set up right, then those ways won't work. Okay, and then we continue to simplify. Get my calculator out here. It's the end of the day. My mental math skills aren't quite there on 36 times 25. It's 900. Divide both sides by 100. And x equals 9. So to answer the question, 9 is 25% of 36. We can still answer the question in a circle. Let's do number two. Go up above here. The question is 14 is what per cent of 70? There's the correct setup. The word what was in the middle of the question, so therefore it's in the middle of our circle. Remember our circle goes around this way. And now we cross multiply and solve. 70 times x connects those two corners. 14 times 100, I can do that one. 1,400, we divide both sides by 70. We can get rid of some zeros there and we get x equals 20. Now we can actually restate the question as a sentence, and it should make sense. And that would be 14 is 20% of 70. Answers the question, 
Once again, that's all in the setup. Let's do the third one. The reason I did three problems like this is there are three and only three possible ways you will get this question. You can have the what in the beginning, the middle, or the end of the question. And depending on where it is, like I said, it will be in one of three places. Number one had it at the beginning. Number two had it in the middle. So you guessed it. Number three will have it at the end. Here's the question. Seven is 35% of what number? There's the what right there. It came last in our circle going around this way, just like a clock. So the what came at the end, therefore it goes as the denominator in the first ratio. Now we're going to cross multiply. 35 times x on one side, 700 on the other side. Divide both sides by 35. And x equals 20. So to answer the question, 7 is 35% of 20. I hope that helps, especially on your Oaks test next week. Get all the points you can. And also as we continue through chapter 6, I hope these problems will help you solve percentage proportions. Thank you.